Good morning and Merry Christmas. God loves you greatly, so much that he sent his one and only son into the world, so that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And that's what we're celebrating this Christmas morning. Isn't it wonderful? Well, I, I love just reading uh, secular advice on how to kind of do Christmas. And I guess there's lots of varieties of ways that you'll be celebrating Christmas even this day. And I'm glad you started with us. And I've noticed there's a very common theme in magazines, newspapers and websites at the moment. They're publishing articles called Christmas Survival Strategies. And so you'll see articles with headings like How to Navigate Christmas and Not Put on Weight. You know, very practical. How to Financially Survive the Shopping Season. One article I read really uh, struck a call with me. It was called Coping Strategies for Introverts at Christmas. I like that one because I'm an introvert. We, we rule the world. And then the advice given in these articles is sometimes quirky and sometimes wise and sometimes just uh, a bit dumb. One one piece of advice I read about surviving Christmas was, you know, how do you deal with the annoying relatives? And the advice was, uh, fake it till you make it. Not sure that's right. I don't know. It doesn't seem sincere to me. Another strategy I read in the same article, though I thought was very wise, it said... A Christmas survival strategy, be kind to yourself. That's quite good, I think. I think we're, sometimes, you know, if you're the chef of that, the house, you're pretty tough on yourself, be kind to yourself. And then I found this gem, and this, this is, is rich, pregnant with meaning, and you may need to talk about this over Christmas lunch. But here is a piece of Christmas survival strategy to take home today. If you get one thing today, the strategy is, don't take the bait. See what I was saying? So it's sort of, uh, you can imagine driving home in the car from a Christmas party and the kids in the back seat going, you know, why was everyone arguing? And one of the kids will say, oh, dad took the bait, you know, so don't take the bait. Well, this morning, I'm going to give you four biblical Christmas survival strategies from God's word, from Psalm 16, that second reading we had. And uh, you see that... These psalms, this songbook of the Bible, is not merely meant to be read in church and heard once. It's there to be used by you. It's there to be prayed by you. And there's some real wisdom here from the zeal of King David, who ruled God's people a thousand years before the first Christmas. And embedded in this psalm is actually a prophecy about what Jesus would achieve. And so that's great as well. But here are my four tips from the Bible about how to survive Christmas. The first is, adore the gift giver. Adore the gift giver. So, King David says in verse 2, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. So, he's, he was able to look past gifts and, and see the giver and worship and adore the giver. That's what we want to do at Christmas, and you're here, you're doing it, it's begun, so that's great. We want to tell God that he is the author and giver of life. He is the creator. Everything good in creation that we enjoy this day and any day is from him. And if you think about it, what what is the best way to receive a gift? There are different ways to give gifts. One way is with a kiss and a hug, some adoration. But we've all received gifts like, you know, you hear a knock at the door and maybe a car skidding and you open the door and there's a present left at the door and maybe some skid marks and the smell of burning rubber and there's no relationship with the giver. We don't want that with God. We want to adore the gift giver. A a writer from the last century, a kind of a provocateur, a Christian provocateur by the name of G.K. Chesterton wrote, The worst moment for an atheist is when he is really thankful and has no one to thank. And so we want to adore the gift giver. We want to adore and thank God this day. Apart from you, I have no good thing, says King David. 
And it's really good, I think, to connect with other people who love and adore God as well. And so King David says, as for the saints in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. Our adoration of God is multiplied by gathering. And so I pray that if you enjoy, if you enjoy this morning, please make a habit of delighting and joining with God's saints uh, every week in this church or in another church near where you live. And beware, friends, those who chase gifts and ignore the giver, who, who obsessed with them, make an idol of gifts. You know, David speaks of the sorrows of those who run after other gods, who run after idols. We want to adore the, the divine gift giver. The second strategy to survive Christmas, count your blessings. Count your blessings, cultivate gratitude. And this is really important for this week because you have time off work, you have time for reflection, you know, so pause, you know, turn off the television, uh, just go for a walk and spend time in gratitude to God. Make an effort to count your blessings and name them one by one. King David does that in the psalm. He says, Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. It's only when he takes the time to count his blessings that he's filled with that sense of joy in God and gratitude. So count your blessings. Maybe even journal them. Can you find time in the next, say, 72 hours to make a list of things that you're thankful for to God? You know, don't just look at your stuff, but look at the people in your life and also look at God's word and look at Jesus. Reread the Christmas story and thank God, count the blessing of Jesus. I don't know how um, you, you think, but here is how my broken brain works. My mind malfunctions and only rehearses disappointments and, and they get etched in stone in my mind if I'm not careful. They're well rehearsed and memorized. And so I have to work at gratitude. And of course, we're not just sort of thanking the universe, we're thanking God. Gratitude belongs to God. And so again, uh, my friend, the provocateur G.K. Chesterton, it's really worth Googling this guy. He's really fun. He writes, When we were children, we were grateful to those who filled our stockings at Christmas time. Why are we not grateful to God for filling our stockings with legs? See see his point? Like, there's so much that we take for granted that we ought to count as a blessing. And as you do that, you can pray with King David, surely I have a delightful inheritance. Even as as you carry some scars through life, we all do, we can actually see how good God is to us. My third strategy, I've got four. My third strategy for coping at Christmas or thriving at Christmas is we need to find security in God. And that's really one of the main themes of this psalm. King David says, Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. You have made my lot secure. Um, As a pastor, I'm kind of a professional people watcher. And... It's sad in a way that I I think many of the stupid decisions that I see people making and that even I make are when people feel insecure and they want to grab at a security or a quick fix and that ends up actually making life harder down the track. They, They feel lonely and they enter into a relationship at too fast a speed or with a dysfunctional person. They take a risky job or investment opportunity to try and get rich quick And it just messes them up. Grabs at security always let us down. And so King David says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. Often nighttime is the time of worry, the time of anxiety. He says, even at night I remind myself my security is in God. I have set the Lord before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. So for this morning, and Christmas often exposes these cracks. If there is a burden or a worry that is is really dragging you down, please run and find security in God. 
use the prayer of Psalm 16. For example, verse 1, pray, keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. It's sort of a prayer and a decision. It's a prayer and a commitment, an expression of confidence in God. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take, for in you I take refuge. When you wake up, pray that prayer. When you go to bed, when you feel insecure, when you're burdened with anxiety, when a friend comes to you and they're worried, pray with them that prayer. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. So there's here, so far, here are my three Christmas survival strategies. Adore the gift giver, count your blessings, and find your security in God. And lastly, my strategy is from the psalm, and King David's strategy is, put your hope in the one who can conquer the grave. This Christmas child, this innocent, sort of fragile, vulnerable baby in a manger, is actually in the story of the Bible going to defeat death. Going to defeat death. It's an amazingly powerful uh, person, God incarnate. And so King David gives this embedded prophecy in Psalm 16 about what the Messiah will do. He says, verse 9, My heart is glad, my tongue rejoices, my body will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. The Holy One is Jesus. David says, You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. 1,000 years before Jesus, as King David is approaching the end of his life and starting to worry about dying and eternity, he puts his hope in a future Messiah, a holy one who will not see decay, one who will be the path or the way or the gate to eternal life, all those things Jesus claimed for himself. And so here is really the ultimate source of joy and hope at Christmas, that God sent his son into the world that we wouldn't perish but have eternal life. And really, I think maybe the hardest part of Christmas isn't the risk of overeating or overspending or difficult relatives. The hardest part of Christmas for many of us is actually the people who aren't with us anymore, the people who have gone to the grave. And, and really, personally, one of the bittersweet aspects for me as a pastor is often at Christmas, you know, I've had tons of services this week and all over December, and I re- I'm reconnecting with a lot of people for whom I've taken funerals. And it's bittersweet because it's sweet because of people I love and I love to see how they're going. But I realize that this is, this is maybe their first Christmas without a lost loved one. And the last time I saw these people was at the graveside. And I know for many people, Christmas time is a time when you do go and uh, visit the graveside and have a special time of remembrance of lost loved ones. And, and even our church memorial garden is busy this week. So keep, keep this in mind, though, friends. The, with Jesus, the grave is not the end of the story because God promised through King David who prophesied God's Holy One, Jesus, will not see decay. On the third day, he rose from the dead. Death could not hold him down. And so Jesus, this Christmas child, is our hope. He is the path to eternal life, the way to the presence of God forever and ever. He is the gate and the gatekeeper to the eternal pleasures at the right hand of God in heaven. The the baby who slept in the manger is the man who bore our trespasses on the cross and he's the king of kings who's conquered the grave. And so if we die with faith in Christ, our bodies rest secure because Jesus' body did not see decay and one day he'll bring eternal life to all who love him. So here, here are these four Christmas strategies, friends, all from Psalm 16, the fourth one being the critical one. But please, this Christmas... Would you adore the gift giver? Adore the gift giver. This Christmas, would you count your blessings? Name them one by one to God. Will you find security in God? Will you call out to him and and decide to have your security 
and refuge in him. And this Christmas, put your hope in Jesus, the grave conqueror. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, bless our Christmases this day and this week. Bless our coming year. Help Jesus to, to transform us and change us. And thank you for this time, special time we have now to celebrate and worship you, God, the gift giver. Amen.